you want to know what's going on in West Texas, I want answers. Answer. Answer. you want the morning drive. Well, like this. Um, I, I, I'm going to fall on my petard. What, what's that word? Picard, petard. Yeah, you'd be hoisted on your I'm own I'm going to hoist on my own. You know, I, I really felt stupid yesterday. We were talking about the election stuff and how it all worked out, all the primaries, and I, I, didn't, I didn't know for sure how this worked. So I went, we went and found the, the guy that does know how it works. It's Ben Farmer. He is the Ector County Chairman of the Libertarian Party, and he is right here in the studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Robert. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for, for coming over. And uh, uh, I think Ben uh, confessed to me yesterday he, he listens to the program but was not listening uh, yesterday and at a point to where he could save my life. So uh, <laughs> as a result, uh, we didn't get the information to you that we needed to get. Um, Everywhere I see, I see uh, where libertarian candidates are running for one office or another, and they have a primary as well. But it doesn't doesn't work like the Republican and Democrats. How does it work? No, no, no. In fact, we don't have primaries. We oh. use we use conventions in uh, in our party. Okay. So it starts at, th- at your l- most local level in your voting precincts. Mm-hmm. And we have a precinct elections that take place all across the state at the exact same time on the exact same day. Uh, ours this year are March 11th. They start at 7 p.m all over the state of Texas in your own voting precinct. We then move on to uh, county conventions at that point, and that takes place next Saturday, March 15th, and that happens, again, all across the state. All along the way, we're voting for new delegates to the next convention. The convention after that is the district convention, Mm -hmm. and then we, of course, we move on to the state convention after that. We do this for a a lot of different reasons. Uh, Number one is we don't think it's fair or appropriate to use tax money to handle our own uh, inter-party workings, our own business. And in fact, when you are using primaries, you're having to use tax money for voting stations and all, well, all sorts well, of no, things. Wait, wait, when, you, when you have your precinct uh, elections though next week, what, what, what will you use? I mean, there's just, uh, who, who, where are you gonna go to vote? If I, if I wanted to go vote in the-, in the uh, It's gonna be a show of hands? Sure, no, we, actually what we do is uh, in Ector County- We're all going to your house? We're going to my house in oh. Ector County for the precinct conventions. Oh, okay. really? So and we've posted all that information with the, with the city State or the city secretary, uh-huh. county secretary. But it does literally going to your house. Really. Literally to my house, yes. And uh, I think this year might be the last year we'll be able to do that. Why? They're, they're because getting because your house isn't big. <laughs> That's right. My house is not big enough to okay. handle to okay. handle the kind of growth, especially that we'll see at the uh, at the county convention. I see. Wow. All right. So so basically, then uh, you don't uh, you know not thinking about it really, but yeah, you do take up tax money, taxpayers' yeah. time if you have a, yeah. a Republican. Yeah. or Democratic primary. So in each of these primaries, you are electing delegates to go to the next round That's of primaries and represent you. And represent a voting member. Uh, so uh, a lot of business yeah. also gets done at the county at the, at the conventions that aren't just a, a candidate, de, candidate nominations. We handle party business, party platforms. So business. when do you finally come up with your slate of candidates? Sure, at, after the state convention, which is this April 11th through 13th, it's in uh-huh. Temple, Texas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After the state convention, we'll have all of our candidates lined out, at least as far as the state level offices go. Okay. We will then have a national convention, which I think is in Columbus, Ohio. And, and that's the way we do it, all the way up the chain. I guess you got some. I guess you have some by rules or bylaws out there that say, hey, we only need X number of delegates from this county, X number of delegates based on population. Same kind of deal, right? Exactly right. And in Ector County, we get four delegates to the okay. state to the to the state convention. The okay. bigger counties, Harris County, they'll have thirty something delegates. Uh, here, here's my question, Ben. Uh, it, it, does the Libertarian Party support their candidates in a general election the way that the other parties support their candidates? Do you guys provide funds? Yeah, absolutely. We have funds. Do. We have PACs that, that support, that okay. support the, uh, the party directly. or do they? I don't exactly know how the PACs work, but okay. it's, it's the exact same kind of thing. The amount of money is, of course, far less at this yeah. point. Yeah. But we are growing. I mean, yeah. every single election, it's it's well, let me getting ask bigger you, and bigger. Well, that's a good question. Is is is, is the money far less because uh, that's just the philosophy and the principles of the party, or is it far less uh, because you're just not big enough? I think one of the things we run into all the time is the idea that well, I'd, I'd love to vote for your guy, but he's just not going to win because he's a libertarian. That's right. Yeah, and uh, it's something that we fight all the time, of course. But the one thing we have to remember is that the, both neither the Democrats or the Republicans have followed through on the things they say they stand for. You know, the Democrats say they're going to take your money and give it to somebody else. Well, the Republicans say they're not, but then they do. So I just wonder how many more times in a row are we going to be, are we going to be bamboozled by these guys before we start really putting pressure on them? Do you, do you, um, 
Do, do you feel that the um, the presence of the Libertarian Party being conservative? I mean, you guys are very conservative. Certainly economically. Economically, for mm-hmm. sure. And then uh, sometimes I think my problem with the party is the foreign um, relation, the foreign relation sure. aspect of the party. But um, do you think the presence of the Libertarian Party hurts conservative Republican candidates? I think the presence of the Libertarian Party is the only thing keeping conservative Repub- or non-conservative Republicans in check. We've seen the Tea Party come up over the last eight do, years Do you or not so. feel like they represent you guys pretty close? Uh, they're, uh, economically, certainly. Yeah. But they still want to kind of tell people what they can and can't do with their own bodies. And, yeah. and we believe that a, a person is the sole proprietor of their own person. Okay. And uh, so when someone wants to tell you what you can and can't do with your business, well, yeah. we think that's authoritarianism. Yeah. Or what you can and can't do with your own body, we see that as authoritarianism. Yeah. So it's all about leave people alone. Government is not the solution to your life. Yeah. And I believe right now the Libertarian Party is the only party who truly represents that ideal in its completeness. How many candidates do you guys have elected to state government in Austin or federal government in Washington, D.C., do you know? We have over 100, 100 Libertarians elected across the country. Now, as far as mm-hmm. I know, only one or two of these are elected as high as a state office. Okay. Most of these are going to be your school board people, your, your locally affected okay. local mm-hmm. offices like Okay. That. Now you got a bunch. This, this was a kind of a banner year, I guess, uh, for you guys uh, putting candidates on the, on the ballot. In fact, uh, a lot of times we, we'll see these ballots go by, and we will we'll see you know the Republicans, Democrats field four or five people, uh, in, for example, in any race, and then there's one Libertarian that says, "Okay, I'll I'll take a hit for the team." <laughs> and I, I hate to say it that way, but that is kind of the way it looks, Ben. Uh, there are plenty of political philosophers that that have spoken and said, "Hey, third parties." never work out they only elect the the worst guy you want to elect and that we've seen that with ross perot stepping in to do whatever he did people are worried about that from a tea party standpoint uh and of course the libertarian party now stepping on up uh with with more people you have a you have a political philosophy on that one way or another yeah sure Uh, the idea that we somehow take votes away from conservatives or from the republican party is it's just it's just rhetoric if you actually look at the polling numbers that come out of each of these elections we draw equally from democrats as we do from republicans in this area we would probably draw more from republicans although maybe not we have very very uh i liberal i don't want to use the word liberal sure. we have very open immigration policies of course we want to end the war on drugs and all sorts of things that really affect what a free market can do so the idea that that third parties always end up electing uh, the worst possible candidate. You mentioned the 92 election, Ross Perot, and, and Bill Clinton gets in there. Well, I would say there's, a, there's another fight that you can have there. How many, how many Democrats are running for an office where a Republican isn't running, or vice versa? If you go in there and vote straight Republican ticket or straight Democratic ticket, you're missing out on a chance to vote, for, vote against the party because we're going to have a Libertarian in that race. If you vote straight Democrat, you don't get to vote for uh, offices that don't have a Democrat. See, I, I think it's long. interesting that uh, in Texas that there is a Libertarian Party that's that's coming up strong as it is because Texas is is a red state. It's it's a Republican state. It's a conservative. Conservative. Okay, I know. I say that word sometimes and it gets crazy. <laughs> uh, so so I, I find that if Libertarians you know follow a more conservative uh, point of view, mm-hmm. then yeah, I can see in some other states. Ohio, where pick pick one, New Mexico maybe. I don't know. I can see that being stronger there, but not in but not in Texas. Well, Texas has always been a conservative state. I mean, before the 1960s, there wasn't a dog catcher in in this in the state that was not a Democrat. Yeah, and it's always been a a, Demo- a conservative state. Well, right now, what we're seeing in the growth in the Libertarian Party of Texas is just more proof that Republicans have abandoned conservatism. They are not conservatives anymore. They have only ever grown the size and scope of government. They have only ever told you what you can and can't do with your own self, with your own life, with your own business, with your own money. Mm-hmm. And this, I think this is one of the main reasons why libertarianism and the Libertarian Party in particular is, is growing. We're not seeing this kind of growth in the Green Party, for instance. Yeah. No. So it's not a third party no, not movement. Here. Not here. Well, I, I've mm-hmm. got to ask you because you, you're emphasizing what you get to do with your own body. So would the Libertarian mm-hmm. Party be in favor of abortion? We are split 50-50 on that. Really? You know, we believe in the non-aggression principle, which is that the initiation of force is always yeah. immoral. So the question with abortion is, if you're using laws to dictate when someone can and can't have an abortion, who are, who are you initiating force against, the woman or, or the child? 
So we're split 50-50 on that. There's just as much argument in the Libertarian Party as there would okay, be. Okay, well, let me ask you. You, you, you have your own property. Do you have a right to discharge a shotgun in your backyard? Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. what happens if a pellet comes into my backyard? Well, then you have the right to... Shoot back? To, I would say, to... Um, I mean, aren't you encouraging kind of... just recompense. Aren't, aren't you kind of... Yeah, well, I don't want to lose an eye. It's always fun until you lose an eye. Uh, <laughs> well, then you get but, to play but with aren't the But aren't you kind of... Aren't you kind of stimulating almost anarchy i mean we're just everybody goes i am going to do i don't want to stop at this red light which which a whole lot of people don't that's right okay um i, I mean we have to have laws there has to be some controls for society sure. to function sure and the thing we use we can have government without we can have governance without necessarily having a huge government oh i agree with that i mean i think if you're interested in in and the idea is, what is the smallest amount of government possible in order yeah. to maintain a civil society? Boy, right. if we could come up with that equation, we'd make a bazillion, quadrillion dollars. <laughs> well, I think so, but we probably call, have a hard call time ben selling Farmer. it. Yeah. Call Ben Farmer. He wants to tell you how to do that, I guess. Do you ever have any candidates who are members of the Libertarian Party who gain recognition and then go, hey, now that I got the attention of the Republicans, I'm switching parties? Certainly in the past. I mean, the, the strategy you. over the last 30 years was let's try to infiltrate, infiltrate. That's, no, kind of that's a sinister good word. word no, that's a good word Let's try you to change get, it from the inside. Right. And that's, that was the strategy over the last 30 years. And then what we saw, especially during the candidacy of Ron Paul for presidency, is that he was not welcomed, not at all welcomed, not only by inter inter party, the inner party mainstream people, but mm -hmm. the media practically ignored him, even though he was doing very, very strong in in much of the races. Well, hey, that, that, that should be a blessing because when the media, when you're a Republican and the media doesn't ignore you, it's only to criticize you or find flaws. That's so exactly really right. that, you know, I, I really liked Ron Paul's candidacy. The only thing that ever bothered me about Ron Paul was his foreign affairs. Sure, and that's what most people say, too. I, you, we can't be isolationist anymore. I don't think isolationist is the proper term, but if we are truly interested in defense, I think anyone who's been out to Ratliff Stadium on a Friday night sees the difference between offense and defense. And 900 military bases overseas outside of our own borders, that is not defense, that is offense. If China had a base in Pampa, Texas, we'd be freaking out right now. And yet this is what we do to countries all over the world all the time. You think maybe they might uh, be a little bit suspicious of us that way? Strap a gun on and go walk around some other guy's country, people are touchy about that sort of thing. <laughs> you kidding? They get upset in Andrews. That's right. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean another country? Uh, you, I'm sorry, I'm, we're way, way digressing on that. You guys have a lot of, but you have three people running for the U.S. Senate job uh, in the Libertarian Party. You will not decide who's going to do that until the state convention. April 11th through 13th, uh, You yes. have one person for U.S. Congress, District 11, that will be running against now. We know Mike Conaway. Mm -hmm. uh, is it Rin? Uh, T. Lang? You know, R-Y-N, R-Y-N? I will be meeting that person next week. I haven't met that person directly yet. Not so. from around here? Uh, maybe not from Odessa. Okay, sure. Uh, then in the uh, upstate, uh, in the 19, where uh, Randy Nogabauer faces uh, also a, a candidate. Governor's race. You guys are fielding two for six people. Yes. To run to the Libertarian Party's governor's uh, Not position. just six, but also in this party, we always keep the option open for NOTA, which is none of the above. And I like this very much about our party. If we feel like none of the candidates we feel are qualified to hold that seat or to represent the party in that election, we have the ability to vote for none of the above, as if that's well, also then who's, a candidate. Well, then who's going to run the place? I mean, who's going to take the job? Who's going who's well, to sit nobody there? Nobody from the Libertarian Party. Well, I tell you what, if there were fewer people up there running our place right now, we might be in better shape. I mean, the only scary part to me well, living in the state you'd, of you'd Texas is with a Congress dictator. You might end up with one guy or two guys that, that you know. Okay. Well, All I right. don't think Texas people would put up with that for very long. All right. All right. But anyway, a lot of folks are on the ballot. Uh, and uh, they didn't show up on the ballot for your primary. You didn't have a choice. You uh, Now, I also, quick uh, point of order, mm -hmm. if you voted in the Republican Democratic primaries, you cannot become a delegate. Can you go to your meeting? You can absolutely go. The meetings are always open to the public, but you could not become a voting delegate in the in the uh, conventions. That's just, state just, rule. That's not just, our And rule. you just ask when you get to your house, did you vote? And they say yes or no, right? They have to show a form of ID. Voter's registration card is always... Probably the best way to do it these days. And how do you know if I voted? I, uh, well, I, I have a list that I get from the okay. county. Okay. All right. So you, you have a record of who voted where. Yes. Gotcha. gotcha. Ben, thanks for coming over yeah. and, and explaining to, the, to me. No, I we hope, got an education I hope to here. the rest of you uh, <laughs> now how this works. So I'm going to file this away in my little uh, memory bank so I remember this. Ben, thanks. 
Good Thank luck you. on the, the precincts next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, March 11th at uh, my house, 1406 Shafter Avenue. Is there a phone number that you call or just... And you can, I tell you what, you can reach me through my email address. You can go to lptexas.org. It's libertarianpartytexas.org. And that'll get you there. Yes, sir. lptexas.org. Ben Farmer, thanks for coming in this morning. Mm-hmm.